Okay, here's another set of problems where you're going to be given the formal charge of an atom. And from there, you're going to have to figure out uh, and draw out all the lone pairs of each atom. Okay, so you're going to use the formal charge formula if you need to, to calculate how many lone pairs there are on each atom in the molecules drawn. All right, so press pause, work on it by yourself, and then when you're ready, press play. All right, so let's look at CH3OH2. CH3OH2, and it might help if we actually draw out CH3OH2, okay? Now, it has a positive charge, and so oxygen has a positive charge. You're gonna see that in every case where you have oxygen, for our purposes, every time you're gonna see oxygen with a positive charge, it actually is gonna have a full octet. But just for our purposes, let's just use the formal charge equation for the first time. So valence electrons in the free neutral atom is six. Uh, we have three bonds, so uh, we have a total of six bonding electrons times one half is three. And from this, we need to figure out the number of non-bonded electrons. So let's just do the math here. Six minus three is three. So three, if we move that over to the other side, we're gonna actually get uh, minus two. Okay, so if we move that over to the other side. Uh, move everything over to the other side, we're gonna get two. That is actually gonna be our number of non-bonded electrons. You can kind of ignore the minus sign here. So we're gonna have two. And you'll see that actually this gives us a full octet on our oxygen. So this is just another way of figuring out the number of lone pairs on oxygen. I think it's probably faster to know that you've got a full lone pair, a full octet on oxygen, um, a total of eight, and you just sort of add lone pairs to give yourself eight. But it's sort of a long way that if you need to actually figure it out, this is how you do it. Okay. So in this example of this middle middle example here of ozone, we've already actually got the um, the oxygens all drawn out. Um, so this oxygen on the far left here is neutral. It's gonna have a total of eight electrons. You can see that it has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. Now this oxygen as drawn has a positive charge. So it has two, four, six electrons. So it doesn't actually have a full octet. In order for it to actually have a formal charge of plus one, you're gonna to need to draw in a a, a lone pair of electrons on that oxygen. And just to double check, let's just, um, we know the formal charge is plus one. The valence electrons for oxygen is gonna be six. We've got a total of six bonding electrons, so one half times six. And we've got two bonding electrons, or non-bonding electrons. I, sorry, non-bonding electrons, my, my mistake. So six minus three, which is one half times six, minus two, should give us an answer of one, and that is the case. So that is correct. Okay, and let's look at this last, oh, not done yet. So we have oxygen here, we have one bond, it's got a negative charge, it's still gonna have a full octet. And so we can draw in a negative charge here. And so that does, it does give it a full octet. And just to double check the charge here, your charge is minus one. So minus one, we have six valence electrons in free oxygen. We have one half times two. Um, so that's gonna actually be one. And we have a total of six non-bonded electrons. So if you do the math, six minus one minus six actually does give you minus one. So that's also correct. All right, last example. Let's look at the nitrogen first, okay? So the nitrogen has a total of four bonds around it, so eight non-bonded electrons. So it actually has a full octet. So we can be extremely sure that we don't have any lone pairs around our nitrogen because that would lead nitrogen to break the octet rule. So we satisfied that, that uh, we do not have any lone pairs on that nitrogen. Now this oxygen up here, let's draw in two because two lone pairs because it's bonded to two, uh, it has two bonds to nitrogen. So that gives us a total of eight electrons and a full octet, and that is neutral oxygen. So um, using the formal charge formula, you can check for yourself, make sure that that is correct, but it should be correct. Now oxygen with a negative charge, actually if you saw earlier, should have a uh, three pairs of, three lone pairs around it, or a total of six non-bonded electrons. And hopefully you can start to see, see a pattern here with 
the oxygens. And that is, that if you have for oxygen, you know, and you think about the charge and sort of the lone pairs here. So if the charge is neutral, then you're going to have two lone pairs. Actually, let's start with the charge is plus one, like it was over here. You're going to have one lone pair. The charge is neutral. You're going to have two lone pairs. And the charge is minus one. You're going to have three lone pairs. Okay. So that pattern will hold um, throughout your course, and you should see that um, the that you can relate the formal charge on oxygen to the number of lone pairs, and vice versa. So. If you're given a number of lone pairs but not given the charge, you should be able to figure that out fairly readily uh, based on the, the number of bonds to oxygen and then just to fill out the number of electrons to, to give yourself a full octet for your oxygen. So that's how the formal charge on oxygen and the number of lone pairs on oxygen are related.